Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 69 of the D Heart House podcast. My name is Alicia, and I'm your host for this crafty podcast. So today is Sunday, December 8th of 2019, and I have officially finished grading final exams. I'm so happy. Yes, it's Sunday. It's December. It's like a week into December. This year has really flown by. I just am amazed. <sighs> yeah, take a breath. Take a moment. So up at the top of the episode, before we get into the wonderful hand knit items, um, first of all, if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for checking out this podcast. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. It means a lot to me that you guys watch this podcast. And speaking of that, we are so insanely close to 200 subscribers. So if you haven't already subscribed, just go ahead and click that button because I anticipate that on the next episode, we will have reached that goal of 200 subscribers and I'll be able to give some stuff away. So when that does happen, which it hasn't yet, I will be hosting a giveaway right here on YouTube um, in thank you for that. So we haven't gotten there yet, so I will not start it, but I think we'll probably get there on the next episode, so you can look forward to that. So for other announcements, we do have a knit along running in the D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry. That is a mouthful. So <laughs> there is a group for this podcast over on Ravelry. It's called the D Hard House podcast group. And over there, I post show notes with links to things that I talk about during the episode and also host knit alongs. And we happen to have one running right now, the Give Thanks hat collection knit along. So if you purchase the Give Thanks hat collection for only $5, <laughs> Uh, and knit one or several of those hat patterns. Uh, for each finished object, you will earn an entry in a giveaway. So uh, you can knit the same hat many times or one of each hat or just a single hat, doesn't matter. Uh, but for each hat that you finish from the collection, all I ask is that you take a picture of your finished object and you post it in the thread, uh, one picture for each post so that each finished object gets you an entry in the giveaway. Uh, all the details are over in that finished object thread over on Ravelry, so go check it out. Uh, speaking of the Give Thanks hat collection, thank you so much to those of you who purchased a copy during the month of November. Uh, $1 from each sale was donated to Feeding America, and we sold 10 copies during the month of November, so $10 was donated to Feeding America. And according to their website, that equates to about 100 meals. So thank you so much for those of you who were so generous. Uh, last month. I know it really means a lot. So to talk about knitting content, um, I'm going to be honest, I don't have a lot to share. I have been working on gift knitting for Christmas, and like I've said before, I'm keeping that a secret. So I don't have a lot to share with you, but I have a little bit. I have a little bit. So because I knew I was working on a bunch of Christmas knitting and I would have basically nothing to share with you, I did cast something on just for you. It wasn't selfish. No, of course not. It wasn't selfish. Yes, it was selfish. Whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. So before I get into sharing this sock with you, um, <laughs> uh, the, I will be putting up a bonus episode with all of my Christmas knits. Uh, but I'm not going to post it until after I've made sure that all of my family members have opened their gifts. I don't know who watches this podcast, and I don't want any surprises to be spoiled. So I'm waiting until then to share the results with you. So since I knew I wouldn't have a lot to share with you today, 
I, uh, I did cast on a sock, very simple self-striping sock. I'm sorry for the clicking needle noises. Uh, this, these socks are not for me, as selfish as it is. Uh, these are for my husband, Michael. So I'm knitting this out of some self-striping yarn. I'm working this cuff down, which is my favorite. Uh, and I'm working one by one rib all across the leg and then down the top of the foot. I'm actually working a heel flap and gusset. If you've watched this podcast for a while, you know that I love a short row heel. And I'm doing a heel flap and gusset because I felt like it. Okay? Because I felt like it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just woke up one day and was like, you know what? I'm going to do a heel flap and gusset. And it was just that kind of day. And you know what? I really like it. So there. Um, yeah, no, I'm, um, I'm curious because this heel flap is that, um, slip stitch type of pattern. The fabric right here is thicker and I'm just really hoping that it holds up well, you know, but it looks, I think it looks really nice and, um, yeah, I'm just hoping it goes well. But see, I feel like with the self-striping yarn, <laughs> the heel flap and gusset actually looks really nice keeping the self-striping yarn and not switching to a contrasting color. But with a short row heel, I feel like it looks really nice to have that pop of a contrast color. So uh, I didn't want to switch out and try to find a matching skein. Uh, so I just went with this and I really like it. So this is flying along. Um, I cast this on in the waiting room. Um, I took Michael to a few doctor's appointments and uh, hung out in the waiting room and and started this sock. I have since been knitting on it at home so I was not in the waiting room that long. <laughs> but uh, yeah so I'm just knitting this out of some Serenity sock. Um, this is in the, oh gosh, what is this colorway called? I'm not going to remember. Who am I kidding? Let me see if I can find the tag. Found it. <laughs> uh, so Serenity sock, uh, Premier Yarns Serenity sock. Uh, it's not going to focus, but that's fine. This is in the gray flannel colorway. So, um, my local Joann's, I think I told you guys, had a bunch of yarn in the clearance bins, and I went in one day to just pick up a skein. I was just going to use a coupon. It was like a 30% off coupon, get 30% off one item, and I was like, I'm going to go in and buy one skein of yarn, get it 30% off, and leave. And they had all this yarn in these clearance bins, and I was like, ooh. And then there was a sign in front of it that said an extra 25% off clearance. And I was like, okay, yep, screw this 30% off coupon. I am buying from this clearance bin today. This came from that clearance bin. Uh, so you can see it was marked down to $2.97. And then it was an extra 25% off that. So, very cheap pair of socks. Uh, no, I... Um, I teach for a living. I teach at a uh, two-year institution uh, that now offers four-year degrees, which is an exciting new endeavor. Uh, but anyway, I teach for a living, and you know, traditionally, uh, teachers do not make a lot of money, and I am no exception <laughs> to that. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's okay to knit on a budget. Um, my hobbies have to exist within my limitations and my budget is one of those things. So anyway, um, even though this yarn was extremely inexpensive, uh, it's really good yarn. And I have a funny feeling that the reason, um, a bunch of these Premier Yarn Serenity socks were in the clearance bin. I have a funny suspicion that the reason they were there 
is because Joanne's is, is discontinuing them or this company is discontinuing them um, because I can't find them in the store anymore. So that's a bummer. But anyway, um, I've knit several pairs of socks out of uh, this brand of yarn and it's, it's actually quite nice. So um, don't knock it till you try it. Just because it's on sale and marked down, discounted, and in a big big box store doesn't mean um, it doesn't have quality to it. So uh, anyway, I cast those on uh, a few days ago and I've been making some progress. So that's the first sock out of the pair. The second thing I wanted to show you is a blanket. So I started this blanket, uh, what, like two years ago? in 2017, I believe. And it's not it's not finished yet. It's still going. It's still going. Uh, I have not put a lot of work into this, but in the past couple, three weeks, <laughs> I have put some squares on this. So it is now uh, 15 squares. So these 15 of these squares, um, around excuse me 15 by 15 it's very big very very big uh, but it is a mitered square blanket I'm just straightening this out here I'll get all cozy <laughs> but it's a mitered square blanket and you can see the mitered bit here I've worked it so it's it's angled so if I just do this, yeah, so it's big and unruly, <laughs> um, but anyway, so I started in the middle where all the mitered edges come together and it makes a nice X in the middle. Uh, and you start with those middle squares and then you work your way out. So you have to start in the middle of the row and do these two squares first, these two, um, and then you work out from there. And that way all your mitered edges, right, everything's lined up like you want. So yeah, that's really cool. Uh, so the yarns that I'm using are all, uh, this is all worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn. Uh, this light gray color, which is the most used color in this design. So this light gray is Karen yarn in the soft gray colorway. The white is Red Heart yarn in white. And this darker gray is Red Heart in charcoal. So what I've done is, is obviously laid out the colors so that it makes this plaid, buffalo check, gingham type of design. Uh, so this is <laughs> in my project pages as uh, my buffalo check blanket. So it is a 15 by 15 square. So what I'm going to do is we've, we've modified, modified the plan now a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do is continue this until it's a 16 by 16. So what I've done is in order to keep it an actual square. So right now it's not an actual square, right? What I've done is I've taken the square and I've put these two edges on it to make it 15 by 15. And now what I have to do is put these two edges on it to make it a 16 by 16. So that's what I'll do. And then I'll stop making it a square. And what I'll do is I'll just add on to the ends to make it a little bit longer. So two to two to four rows on each side. I don't anticipate needing 10 extra rows, but I'm going to make it as wide as the couch is. <laughs> that way it can cover two people that are sitting on the couch right next to each other. Um, and then I'm probably because I really like a border and I don't like this edge. It looks unfinished. I think that I'll probably crochet around the edge. 
um, and probably in this charcoal color because I think it would frame it really nicely. Uh, anyway, so that's the plan. <laughs> so I have been, um, here's the back side. I have been really good about weaving in my ends as I go. So there are no ends hanging off this blanket right now. Uh, there were some ends hanging off it for a while. And then I just took a day to weave those six ends in, not a big deal. But this has been sitting on the couch. It's been used, it has been washed, <laughs> and it's still not a finished object yet. <laughs> but you know, what I'll do is I'll just cozy up underneath it and use it as a blanket. And then while I'm using it as a blanket, I'll put a few squares on it. Uh, so this is the perfect time of year to be blanket knitting, in my opinion, because I get cold, I want to cover up with a blanket, and since it's already on my lap and I know I need to work on it, I can feel motivated to put a few squares on it. But uh, what I need to do is finish that last Christmas gift so I can do this guilt-free. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I've made a little bit of progress and um, I'm really happy about that. Okay, so that's it for knitting that I'm allowed to share with you. <laughs> but I do have some spinning to share. So I purchased, um, what is it, Coopworth, um, two pounds of raw Coopworth fleece. And uh, so not a whole fleece. Can I call it a fleece if it's only part of it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, it came very dirty, so I've washed it, uh, combed it, spun it, washed it some more, uh, and I've been doing that. So I'm in the process still. And so I have uh, some singles here. So it is a dark, glorious, dark charcoal gray color. You can see some shine in there. Um, it still has a little bit of that lanolin in it, uh, but oh my gosh, it is a dream. It is a dream. Anyway, so <laughs> so I have two uh, two bobbins of singles spun up. I need to ply them, uh, but I thought I'd show you guys um, some of my singles before plying them. Because uh, it just looks so cool if it would ever focus. Okay, it doesn't want to cooperate, but that's fine. Um, anyway, so I'm I'm slowly making progress, uh, but like I said, I've been really focused on Christmas knitting, so I haven't done a lot of other things. But um, I did get new bobbins that I wanted to, to share with you. So these I ordered, I ordered two of them. So my wheel is an Ashford traditional and I bought it used from someone who knows little to nothing about spinning. So um, it's not the greatest spinning wheel in the world, but that's okay. Uh, it came with four bobbins, two of which were totally unusable. Uh, and after fixing one of them, uh, three usable bobbins, that fourth one is just not, not going to happen. So with only three bobbins, what you can do is spin a singles, a singles, and then use a third bobbin to ply them together. And that's cool. That's cool. It gets it gets me running. But I could never do a traditional three ply. I just I don't have enough bobbins. Uh, and <laughs> um, I'm I've got another spinning project that I started that I forgot to finish, and that's taking up a bobbin. And I didn't want to put this on pause to then go do that. Mm, uh, whatever. So. <laughs> I just broke down and said, you know what? I want more bobbins anyway, because at some point I would like to try a traditional three ply. So I went on to Etsy and I found 
a shop that sells these uh, traditional bobbins. So this is unfinished wood, but it has this nice plastic piece on each end. Um, and so this plastic piece does go inside a bit. Not, it's not all the way through, right? But there's enough plastic on there that when I put this bobbin on the flyer, that it's the plastic piece that's touching that metal rod. My old bobbins don't have this plastic piece. It's wood on the metal. So what I notice is that this spins much easier, much, much easier than the other bobbins. And it's probably because it's plastic on metal instead of wood on metal. Uh, and even with the oil on there and whatnot, um, I, can, I can tell a little bit of a difference uh, in the spinning. Anyway, just, it's just a little bit, it's just tiny. Anyway, so they're really good quality and they were extremely affordable. So the shop where I purchased uh, these bobbins is called Twist and Fell on Etsy. And if you are in the market for bobbins and other spinning items, you should check out the shop because this is exactly what I ordered. Really good, high quality. The shipping was really fast. I like almost got it the next day, it seemed like. <laughs> uh, and so really good service, really good product and really good prices. Uh, so again, that's Twist and Fell on Etsy. So I'm really happy about that purchase. Really, really happy. So I want to share with you some future knitting, some stuff that isn't on the needles yet, but I want to get it on the needles. So some future wishful knitting. And that future wishful knitting, this thing in particular, is all about this fluffy yarn. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is Go For Faux Lion Brand. Thick and quick. Look at this. Okay, I know my lighting is not amazing. That is how thick one strand is, you guys. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's so soft. Okay, so this is, if I can find the composition, 100% polyester. So I can machine wash it, but I have to lay flat to dry. Uh, and then it has a note about excessive washing and how the fur will fall, the fake fur will fall out. So be careful of that. Anyway, uh, when I was at the store hunting for yarn for gifts and things, uh, I saw this on the shelf and oh my God, it wasn't on sale, but I had to have it. So this is in what colorway? Chinchilla. Chinchilla. That's an animal, isn't it? Like a little rodent type, little scurry little animal. Bigger than a hamster. Mm -hmm. Definitely bigger than a hamster. Uh, anyway, oh my gosh, I want to knit myself a hat out of this. And just have this fluffy, fluffy hat on for Christmas. <laughs> but I'm not letting myself cast this on until I finish my Christmas knitting. So I know I keep talking about it. This is how I feel. It's like hanging over my head. Get your knitting done. Hello. So I need to knit one more gift, which shouldn't be very long. It's an, it's an accessory. Uh, and then I can cast on my accessory and have this insanely fluffy hat. So anyway, uh, I have not, I have not used this yarn before. So we shall see how it goes. It is recommending size. Does it say size 35? 35? That doesn't make sense. 19 millimeter? Five stitches in four inches? That's ridiculous. Is that what that says? Can you see that? Does it say a 35? 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, I got one of those. I'm not using that. I mean, it the yarn is thick. It's not like it's all fluff. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> okay, this might be a fun thing to do live. I'm gonna, you know, comment below if you would like to see me fumble around with a cast on <laughs> with this yarn, <laughs> trying to find needles that will work uh, as a live, um, live YouTube episode. Comment down below if you would like to see that. Also comment down below if you would not like to see that. <laughs> Size 35. I shouldn't be surprised that that even exists. Okay. <laughs> Uh, P.S. If you don't watch The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, you should, because that show is hilarious. So we just finished season three last night. We watched season three in two days. I think there's only eight episodes in the whole season. Uh, but it's hilarious. It is, it is just hilarious. Um, anyway, I'm not going to spoil anything, but... If you're looking for a show that will give you a good laugh, uh, there were also some really good moments that rung really true with things that are going on today. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to spoil those moments for you, but they, they were really good, like hit home, hit deep, um, in my opinion. Uh, okay. No, I'm not going to spoil. I'm not going to spoil. I promised I wouldn't, so I won't. So I won't say what the moments are. But they were good. Okay, so that's it for knitting and spinning. Let's see, have I done any other crafts? No, it was final exam week. I finished grading all the things. I finished compiling the grades. I finished answering all the emails and holding all the reviews and everything. So it is now winter break, which is awesome. We start back up on January 2nd. Yeah. <laughs> that seems crazy. <laughs> January 2nd. Uh, that's okay. So outside of knitting, uh, Mike and I have been going out and adventuring the state of Washington. So we went to, uh, I believe you pronounce it, I'm going to pronounce it this way, Kopachuk State Park. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, anyway, so we went to Kopachuk State Park and did some exploring, some hiking around. Uh, it was a really gorgeous fall day. This was like three weeks ago we did this. And uh, was it two weeks ago, three, two, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think that was two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yep, too. Good thing I sorted that out. Um, anyway, so uh, we did some exploring. We did some hiking around there. Uh, the website said that there was camping there. There was not camping there. It was... No, there was a picnic area. Yeah. Anyway... So we went there and we saw on one of the billboard areas where they put up posters and, you know, be bear safe and be cougar safe and, you know, don't dump your trash here. <laughs> they had a really big, um, it looked like a brochure unfolded with a big list of all of the state parks in Washington. And we were like, oh, where do we get this brochure? there's nothing there to go pick up. So we call, I don't know who Michael called, but he called someone on the phone <laughs> and asked for them to send one to us. And they did, which was really cool. So we got that in the mail a few days later and we've decided that we're going to go out and try to explore all the state parks in Washington. This should be really fun. So we have been to Dash Point, which 
I have shared previously. We've been to Kopachuk State Park. Uh, we also went and visited Bogachiel State Park, which is out by Forks, Washington. So it's been a few weeks since I've seen you guys. So um, we've been to Kopachuk and Bogachiel since I've seen you last. And, uh, and we're planning another trip tomorrow to go visit uh, another one, which the name eludes me right now, but I'll share it with you next time. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so it's going to be a fun little um, thing to get us out of the house and exploring. I know that I'm really bad at being a tourist in the place where I live. And so I move to a place and I do a little bit of exploring at first. And then as, as I get settled, I'm now like in resident mode. <laughs> And so I stop wanting to go see the tourist attractions, which means I miss out on all the cool stuff in the area. So we're gonna do this to try to prevent that from happening. So I still wanna be a tourist and I still wanna go out and explore, especially in my own backyard where I don't have to pay for a hotel to go to a museum. Anyway, so yeah, we went and explored Kopachuk State Park, uh, which is on the waterfront in the Sound. And um, Marjorie had fun running through the water on the beach. It was way too cold a day for us humans to go in, so we did not. <laughs> uh, but it was a really pretty hike. Everything was wet because it had rained, was it the day before, I believe, it rained. Hey. How's the water? <laughs> Must be cold. She's not going back in. <laughs> you gonna go back in? You can taste to it, Mom. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's our Labrador. And we went early in the day too. Uh, we tried to get out to beat the crowds. <laughs> I say crowds at trailheads. There are legit crowds at trailheads around here, you guys, which is awesome to see. But we are trying to train our dog to be well behaved on the leash and everything. And having a bunch of humans around is just a big distraction. So step one, get her to listen to us without distractions. Step two, ease her into having distractions. Step three, full on mode with distractions. So we're trying to get out there earlier and um, get her better trained to listen to us on the leash uh, without a bunch of people and other dogs around, which is proving to be a little bit more challenging than you would think, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, so, that is all I have to share with you. If you would like to see a live episode of me playing with Go For Foe, comment below. Uh, also, uh, if you want to purchase a copy of the Give Thanks Hat Collection, that is up on Ravelry forever. So feel free to go ahead and purchase a copy. Just know that um, the donation to charity has finished, so no more of the proceeds will go to charity, but I plan on doing something similar next year and I'll probably pick a different charity. Uh, so you can look forward to that next year. And um, if you knit hats from the Give Thanks hat collection, post them in the finished object thread in Ravelry before the end of the year, you will gain entries into a giveaway for even more prizes. Yay. Okay. Uh, don't forget to subscribe because when we get to 200 subscribers, I'll also have a giveaway for that. All the giveaways. Yay. Okay. Is there anything else? No. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. I hope to see you guys next week. Okay. I'm on winter break, so I hope to have another episode up next week. I will see you then. Until that time. Happy knitting.